We are all about facts here, not fear, and providing information to keep you and your loved ones safe. So as we learn more about the coronavirus, companies are creating new technologies to fight the pandemic. In fact, the NBA, which just announced, this is fascinating to me, that they're gonna offer players a ring a ring that they wear that's supposed to track health data and even predict the onset of infection. Wow, my mind is blown. Dr. Pyle Coley joins us live. Hey doc, before we get to viewer questions, uh, do you think this kind of technology will work? And is it something that you predict we all could wear one day? Cause I want one of them rings, Erica. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You guys don't go out and buy one quite yet. So I have to say, I love the idea of using technology to help us in this pandemic. I mean, it's 2020, we have self-driving cars, we have vacuum robots, we have smart assistants. I'm actually a little surprised that technology hasn't come to our aid yet in this pandemic. So I think this is a step in the right direction, but I'm not quite sold on the ring yet because I don't think it's the best use of technology. So the way that it works is it actually looks for changes in your heart rate as a way to predict that you might be coming down with something. Now you can imagine this is not a very specific metric because there's a lot of things that can change your heart rate. It also detects changes in skin temperature. And we've talked about this before, but some people don't get a fever at all. And some people are infectious for many days before they start showing a fever. So even though I think it's, it's encouraging that it's a step in the right direction, I don't think we're quite ready for prime time yet with that ring. Did you, did you see what I did there yeah. with the yes. basketball joke? <laughs> yes, that was okay. good. You're Just good, Dr. Sure. Carly. Now, Thanks. So <laughs> masks are one of the most important aspects of fighting this pandemic, yet they're possibly the least advanced of any treatment. So do you think it'll stay that way? I don't think it'll stay that way, Erica, but I think masks are fascinating because it's such a simple intervention that can have such a dramatic outcome. But it also sets the stage, to your point, for using technology to make them smarter. So researchers at Harvard and MIT, and we've talked about this on the show before, are actually embedding little chips into masks so that they can detect whether somebody may have coronavirus particles in their saliva. Whoa. So that means that if you're wearing your mask, within a few hours of getting infected, the mask actually lights up and tells you whether or not you're infected so not only do you know for yourself but for others around you so I think that would be huge I mean can you imagine the impact of that in terms of fighting this thing wow I can't imagine walking down the street and seeing people with lit up masks I'd be like go home yeah. leave bye okay so let's get to the viewer comments are you ready Dr. Coley Rosalind says I read that Israel invented a breathalyzer COVID test with a high accuracy rate do you have any information on this uh, uh, breathalyzer test I do, Rosalind, and this is another one of those super cool things that I really hope comes to fruition. So basically, it's a test where you breathe it just like a breathalyzer for alcohol, and it uses the size and the resonant frequency of the virus to detect, you know, its presence in your saliva. And it's got a greater than 90% wow. accuracy so far in clinical trials. Yeah. So it's Whoa. awaiting validation right now and then FDA approval. But if that happens, they said it could be available by September. And, and you guys, what you're right. seeing here is really a shift in, in terms of what we call point of care testing, which means tests, whether they're smart masks or breathalyzers or rings or what have you, ways to which we can detect the virus in real time quickly and accurately so that we can reduce its spread. Imagine if it was connected to your front door and you had to breathe into it. Love and it. And then it locks your door if you have Love it for it. two weeks. Yeah. Or, okay, I'm just or throwing offices it. or schools. <laughs> like, Great. Yes. Well, I want to ask because Rose asked if it's okay to put your air conditioners in your window this summer. I heard it would not be a good idea because of the virus. No, I want to reassure you that in terms of the virus, it's probably okay to use those window air conditioners. But I will say that those have been associated with more asthma, more respiratory disease, and other conditions like Legionnaire's disease. So if you are going to use one, you want to be sure to keep it clean and, you know, just make sure it's not old or moldy or anything like that before you start using it. Great. And if you need some homemade DIY air conditioning, when I was broke in college, I would take frozen <laughs> water bottles and put them on my tummy. Really? Cools the whole body. Oh my God. Yep. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, doctor. Uh, you'll be back tomorrow. So if you have a question about coronavirus you want answered by Dr. Coley, write us on social media. You can also email info at dailyblastlive.com. No panic, just prevention and precautions.